Whoo, okay. Oh, we don't need that. So, we're back with Phoenix, right? And how do I go about doing this? I guess I just start the... Yeah, here we go. After I go ahead and sketch the eye in the back. God, damn skeeters. I hate the summer for that reason and that reason only. God damn mosquitoes everywhere. Just eat me. I don't like it. But, ooh, last time we finished Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. And boy, was that a fun trip. But we are back again in the courtroom. Moving on to Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney Justice for All. The second game in the series. And this is a 100% complete blind playthrough. Oh boy! <laughs> so we're gonna be first, we're gonna be starting the first case now, and uh, see what type of crazy shit happens in the courtroom this time around. So yeah, uh, let's go ahead and get in that and start episode one: the lost turnabout. Uh, yes. Yes, we will play. Thank you. Well, that's not the music I would have thought would have started with Phoenix, right? Huff, huff, grr. How did I get into this mess? That's far enough! You can't run forever, Mr. Phoenix, right? Oh, God, why? Why is he so mad? What? What have I done wrong? I cannot allow you to go on like this. But, but, I'm just a simple defense attorney. Silence! You are no longer worthy of your title. Oh god, it's been a little while. I forgot the voice I gave the judge, but that didn't look like a normal judge. It looked evil. September 8th, 9.08 a.m. District Court Defendant Lobby Number 1. Libby is hosting me. Thank you so much, Boo Boo. You, you are my hero. Phoenix, you just lounging. What a nightmare. And I bet it has this ring. I bet it was this ringtone that caused it. I really shouldn't be dozing off right now, right before a trial starts anyway. Libby with the biddies! Thank you, Bill Bell. <clears throat> Beep. Uh, looks like they hung up. Ah, good. I finally found it. Who the fuck? Did we just get smacked in the head with a fire extinguisher? Talk about a close call. It's nothing personal, Mr. Attorney. Well then. Ooh, what do what we... What, what the hell? A few minutes later, District Court Defendant Lobby Number 1. Ouch, my head. It's throbbing. Why does it feel so foggy in there? Oh, God. C good morning. Yeah, I just like getting jumped on. Um, maybe. In some cases, I guess. Ack. Uh, good, good morning. What's wrong with you? You don't look well. People are at their best first thing in the morning. Where's the fighting spirit? Sorry, but can you please turn down the cheeriness? Yeah, please. We don't need that right now. We just got smacked in the head with a fire extinguisher, damn it! My head sort of hurts. Roger that! Um... Am I in trouble or something? Huh? Trouble? Wait, wait. Never mind. You're a policewoman, right? I thought maybe I had done something wrong. 
What? Wh what are you talking about? I'm the one in trouble. What? I'm placing my life in your hands today, Mr. Phoenix, right? Life in my hands? You promised me... You said you would prove that I was not guilty. No, not guilty? Oh, did... We we lost our memory from the, the fire extinguisher hit, didn't we? Just when I thought all hope was lost, when the other lawyers had left me off. Leave it to me, you said. You, the one and only Phoenix Wright, came to save the day. And just like that, I was moved to tears, sir. Oh, that, that voice is going to bother me. I'll never forget what you're doing for me, ever. What is this girl babbling about? Actually, I really love to watch court proceedings, and I always root for you to win. When I'm off duty, I like to come here and... What's wrong? You've been acting really strange, and you keep staring at me. You're making me kind of nervous, sir. Good luck. <laughs> I'm gonna need good luck, believe me. Oh, sorry. Hmm. I'm afraid to ask, but here goes. So, this might sound bad, but, uh... Who are you? What? Mr. Wright? How can you say that? How can you do this to a fragile heart of a girl about to go on trial? You're absolutely horrible! No, I mean, I didn't mean it like that. Is this how a defense attorney treats his client, sir? I can't believe this. No, it's just... Well, I think you had the wrong person. I'm... Yes, I'm... I'm... Who am I? Why am I drawing a blank? God damn it, this is gonna make it horrible. It's gonna make it horrible. The trial will begin shortly. Will the defendant and the lawyer please proceed to the courtroom immediately? The trial's about to get to start. I'm counting on you in there, okay? I don't think you were ready for that. I don't think I was ready for this, believe me. Hmm, I guess I must have amnesia. Let's see, what can I piece together? From the sound of things, it's probably safe to say that I'm a defense attorney. And that girl, I said I'd prove her not guilty. I can't believe I made such an irresponsible promise. You always make that goddamn promise, Phoenix. Always. So far, it's been good, but still. Ah, uh, someone, please. Tell me this is just a bad dream. Why do I get the feeling this is one dream I won't be waking up from? September 8th, 10 a.m. District Court, courtroom number two. Oh god, here it goes. Court is in court. <clears throat> court is the. I forgot his voice. I forgot his. Whatever. Court is now in session for the trial of Maggie Bird. The prosecutor, the prosecution is ready, Your Honor. What is it, Mr. Wright? <clears throat> um, uh, are you talking to me? Do you see any other defense attorneys here? I'm just gonna skip the voices for this one till I can figure out what the hell I did for everyone. I guess not. Nothing. Are you ready? Um. Sure. Sure, I'm ready. Why not? What the hell? I guess I should say yes for now. Are you ready, Mr. Wright? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Wait a second. If her life is in my hands, I should really do the responsible thing. Actually, you see, Your Honor, my memory is kind of... The court will not hear the defense's excuses. 
Because the defendant is a member of the police, this case is under great scrutiny. Therefore, we must make this trial fair but swift. I believe I have told you this before. I hope you're not telling me you've forgotten. Actually, I have. Oh, this is gonna be bad. Mr. Payne, your opening statement, please. Yes, Your Honor. As I'm sure you're well aware, the defendant is accused of killing her lover. What's worse, her lover was a fellow police officer. Oh, no. A policeman. You did what to a policeman? It wasn't me. And besides, Dustin and I, we weren't lovers like that. In any case, the prosecution will prove that the guilty party is none other than the defendant. Very well. Mr. Payne, please call your first witness. <laughs> it's been a while, Mr. Wright. Let's see what you've learned since last time. I won't show you what I won't show you any mercy this time, rookie. Okay, and who are you again? The prosecution calls Detective Dick Gumshoe to the stand. I know his voice. Here we go. Don't let me down, Mr. Wright. Nowhere to hide. Yeah, I'm gonna need to find you a rabbit's foot for this one. I don't even think a lucky rabbit's foot would work for this. Oh, right off the bat with the impossible bullshit. Witness, please state your name and occupation. Uh, my name is Dick Gumshoe, sir. I'm the detective in charge of homicides down at the precinct, sir. You don't... You don't look very well, detective. Well, sir, the defendant, she works under me, so, you know... You work under that detective? Yes, sir. And while I was a Cheney, he was always watching out for me, sir. He's such a wonderful guy, sir. I'll never forget what he's done for me. Okay, calm down. I believe you. Detective Gumshoe, now please describe for us the details of the murder. Uh, yes, sir. It happened at the park near headquarters, Expose Park. The victim was one of the local cops, Dustin Prince. Dustin Prince. Dustin for Dusting for Prince. Jesus Christ, these names. Poor Gumshoe, he's always put against people he likes. He does, he is. He was pushed down from the benches on the upper path, sir. The landing beat his body up bad and snapped his neck. The details are listed in the report that was dis distributed yesterday. Uh, yes. This autopsy report, correct? Why do I not remember getting a copy? I see everything is in order here. Even the estimated time of death is unusually well documented. Uh, the victim's watch stopped from the impact of the landing, sir. The results of the autopsy confirmed the time of death. If I may, Your Honor. The prosecution would like to submit this photograph. Very well, the court accepts it into evidence. Crime photo 1 added to the court record. Now then, I recall yesterday's preliminary hearing. A very important piece of evidence was brought to our attention. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, sir. Yes, I guess. Mr. Wright, is your head on right today? There was a very crucial piece of evidence found under the victim's body. Uh, was there? Have you lost your mind? Well, actually. Um, it's just nerves. Give me a second. What? How can you talk like such an amateur? I thought you were a pro, sir. Alright, sir, I'll help you through this. At a time like this, maybe you ought to take a glance at the court record. 
Court record. Yep, info about evidence of people involved with this case are all listed there, sir. You can look at the court record by pressing the R1 button, because that's how we do it in court. The R1 button, huh? You really know what you're talking about, don't you? It's too bad I'm a cop, right? Just think, I could totally be a legal aid instead. Mr. Wright? Yes, Your Honor. Court is in session. Save your chit chat for later. S sorry, Your Honor. Well, I guess I'd better check the court record and see what I could find. Yeah, let's see. I found this in my pocket, but I don't remember what it means or how it got there. Time of death, 9-6 at 6.28 p.m. Cause broken neck. Body was also covered in bruises. You have nothing... How the fuck are you gonna fix this? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, I, I get it, I get that. Found under the victim's body, pieces of nearsighted lenses were found nearby. The victim fell from the walking path above. Huh. What was it again? The R1 button. Alright, Mr. Wright, let's see if your notes are in order. What was the piece of evidence found underneath the victim's body? It's simple, Your Honor. A broken pair of glasses. That's right! A victim grabbed his killer's glasses as he was being shoved, sir. And held on to them as he fell. Hey! Why are you giving me the evil eye? Those glasses you're wearing. Uh, yes, this is my spare pair. But these glasses they found at the scene of the crime are not mine, I swear, sir. You sure about that? Look, it was a coincidence that on the same day I accidentally stepped on mine. A coincidence, she says. Uh, uh, your Honor, I have further evidence to present. Oh, you have more? And this evidence is very decisive. Very well. Let's hear from our witness about this evidence. Decisive evidence. Uh, there's some even... There's something even more incriminating than the glasses under the victim's body, sir. During his date, the victim was pushed from the bench area, but he managed to write the culprit's name on the ground where he landed. I don't like saying it, but it was clearly the defendant's name, Maggie, sir. With this piece of evidence and the glasses, it's hard not to say she's the culprit. If she has them, she can present them. That is true, she could. But why isn't she? Because she's stupid, just like every single other client Phoenix had. This picture is from writing, Your Honor. Why this is... Yes, I can see her name is clearly written here. Well, our prosecution would like to submit this picture. Understood, the court accepts it into evidence. Crime photo 2 added to the court record. As if the glasses alone didn't make you look suspicious. The victim even wrote your name clear as day on the ground. But, but, but I already told you those glasses are mine. And how do you explain his dying message? It's a conspiracy. I'm not guilty, sir. I hope she's not, but Jesus. Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. I want to see something. So... I don't know. But uh, that shit don't tell me anything. This is it. I'm counting on you. 
Sure, but what am I supposed to do? What? This isn't like you at all. Normally, this is the part where you get in the witnesses' faces. Get in their faces and do what? I, I guess there's no way around it. Okay, I'm going to lend you a hand. The prosecution's witness all witnesses all hide things from the court. Which means they lie from time to time. Why? But isn't that detective your superior? Well, even if they don't mean to lie, sometimes people just remember things wrong. Hmm. That detective, he does sort of look like a scatterbrain. He is. Gumshoe is a scatterbrain for sure. This is like mocking you. As if you never played this before. This this game did come out like a year or two after the first one, so the first trial is usually like that tutorial. So yeah, they're they're gonna it's gonna seem like that. <clears throat> Bastard for mocking me. Meh. It doesn't matter either way, it's bad for us, sir. That's why when you question witnesses, you have to find and expose their lies. <coughs> Mr. Wright, your cross-examination, please. <coughs> yes, Your Honor. Talk about a trial by fire. Here goes nothing. As long as I could expose the lies, we should be alright. Time to press everything, people! Just like ironing laundry. There's something even more incriminating than the glasses under the victim's body, sir. Wrong, wrong button. Um, about those glasses. Do you have any proof that those belong to my client? And the lenses are for nearsightedness. And they're almost the same strength as hers. They're almost the same strength, therefore they're not. Even the frames look kinda like the one she's wearing in her ID, pal. Not really, those ones are blue. Hmm, what should I do now? Continue pressing. Hold it! Almost and kinda are not good enough in a case like this. Um. Do you have more definitive proof? Is there something that clearly links the defendant with those glasses? Um, uh. The dirt and sand rubbed out. Uh, any traces of fingerprints or anything else. So, what you were saying, detective. Is that you have nothing that proves those glasses are my clients? Oh, uh, some like that. What? What? I see. Hmm. So there is no proof. Wow, that was amazing. I could totally feel it down in my gut. Okay. Uh, during his date, the victim was pushed from the bench area. Now, you're sure he was pushed and that's how he fell? Yeah, pal. If you look at the wounds on the victim's body, there's no way it was anything else. Hmm. Please continue with your testimony, detective. Anyway, the victim fell pretty far. But he managed to write the culprit's name on the ground where he landed. The culprit's name? Yeah, I was surprised too. I didn't want to believe it, but... Was the name that... Was the name... Was the name that of my client? Talks like that. I don't like saying it, but it was clearly the defendant's name, Maggie, sir.
I don't know. If you look at the spelling. Uh, what's up, Mike? How you doing? Welcome to the stream, man. I don't know. If you look at her name. It, it's spelled differently than the one in the picture. Not that picture. This picture. It's M-A-G-G-I-E here. But her name is spelled M-A-G-G-E-Y here. I don't... I think it's honestly a setup. During his date, he was pushed. He managed to write the culprit's name where he landed. Oh, God damn it! I want to press that. The culprit's name. Yeah, I was surprised to... My client. I think I'm going to have to present that. I don't like saying it, but it was clearly the defendant's name, Maggie, sir. I don't think so. Check the death thing. Because of death... He broke his neck. So, do you think... If it wasn't an instant death, he couldn't possibly do it. Yeah. It, it doesn't say that he died instantly, but he broke his neck. Is there any way... I mean, you, you could survive that, I would guess, but... Clearly said... I'm gonna... I'm gonna see if I can present the profile. I can. I, I can present her. I'm gonna present that. It's not spelled right. What? What is it? What? What's come over me? Without thinking, I just blurted out objection! You, and I yelled it at the top of my lungs, finger outstretched, ready to take on my opponent! He's coming back, people. He's remembering. What a rush! Detective Gumshoe. You're, you're talking to me, pal? Please state the defendant's name for me. What are you... What are you trying to prove with this futile excuse, Mr. Wright? Exercise. You'll see, this is a very crucial line of questioning. Actually, Mr. Payne, you could answer the defendant's name if you please. Uh, what is this ridiculous question coming from? The defendant's uh, name is, uh, Maggie Bird. I think someone needs to check the court record. What? It says right here that her name is Maggie Bird. It looks like the bird caught the cat napping. What's going on here? I have no idea either, sir. This is ridiculous. Can he just remember? <laughs> He's getting there. He's getting there, Larry. As you can see, the victim did indeed leave a name. Maggie. However, defendant's name is actually spelled... M-A-T-G-E-Y! What up, crazy? You don't see me at all. I'm not really here, I swear. The crazy ghost is back. But welcome to the stream, man. This is a blatant contradiction of facts. Oh. How about that? I hadn't even noticed. But, but, but. But maybe the victim didn't know how to spell her name correctly. May I remind you that it was you who said the defendant is accused of killing her lover. If they were truly lovers, it would be impossible for him to have not known her name. No! Oh, shit's going down! This is very true. Mr. Payne? Uh, yes, yes, your honor. Are you absolutely certain that the defendant and the victim, Dustin Prince, were in fact lovers? Yes, I'm quite certain, Your Honor. They are a well-known couple in the police force. Detective Gumshoe, please testify for the court the relationship between the victim and the defendant. 
<laughs> yes, sir. That's what's up, homie. Hopefully you did take that break earlier, man. She like eight people so far, maybe more. That's what's up, man. Dustin and Maggie. Officer Prince and Officer Bird had been going out for about half a year now. It sounded like they were even talking about marriage. The, one, the day of the incident just happened to be the victim's birthday, sir. Oh yeah, man. Definitely take your advice. Don't stress, you know. Get yourself out there as much as you can. Don't try to overdo it, bro. Maggie, I mean, Officer Bird had gotten Officer Prince a present. It was something she said brought over two months ago. I should know because she came to me to ask what she should get him. Oh, dude, I know you're bouncing around. That's why, that's why you're the crazy ghost, man. You be lurking. Haunted people's streams, man. Oh, those two sound like they were close. Never less tragedy struck. Hmm, yes, I see. You may cross-examine a witness, Mr. Wright. Officer Prince and Officer Bird have been going out for about half a year. Nice, man. Who else you uh, lurking there? How do you know about this? Every year in March, we have a training camp for us cops. Officer Bird was a rookie at the time, and she and Officer Prince seemed to hit it off. Oh, multi street, dude, that's badass. <laughs> That is smart as shit, dude. You, you got you got two of us going at once on one screen. That that works. Shit. They got close. I take it. Actually, I was supposed to go too, but I couldn't pay the deposit for the trip, so I didn't. If only I'd gone on that trip. What is it? Oh, uh, nothing, sir. Really. Anyway. Is that Sucky Pixie? Oh, nice, dude. That's what's up, man. I gotta check her out. It sounded like they were even talking about marriage. Oh. Marriage? But wasn't that victim eight years older than her? What? You saying a guy's gotta marry someone the same age as him, pal? No, that's not what I meant at all. Detective Gumshoe and Dustin were only a year apart, you know. Uh, I think Gumshoe kinda has a thing for a bird here. That's funny. Uh, I think this fella has a ways to go before marriage. Mind your own business, pal. Hey right, man, show that love. I appreciate it, man. You know that much. The day of the incident just happened to be the victim's birthday, sir. <laughs> day of the incident? You mean September 6th? Yeah. The victim, Officer Prince, had just gotten off duty at 5.30 p.m. that day. And since Maggie's night shift hadn't started yet, they went to the park for a bit. Ah, I remember when I was young and in love. Oh, it was a jolly good time. That's great, Your Honor. I'm glad you're such a cheerful old man. Maggie, I mean Officer Bird, I had gotten Officer Prince a present. You seem to know a lot about the defendant. Well, that's because uh, I'm her boss. And I've got to watch out for my subordinates. 
But even, even what she was going to give as a present, isn't that going a bit too far? Hey pal, watch yourself. I know everything that's happened under me. If someone so much as scratches their... I really don't need to know that much. Uh, Mr. Wright, please refrain from badgering the witness. I agree. Even if this witness has a crush on the defendant, he does. Yo, the judge called his ass out. That's funny shit. That should not be the point of discussion at this time. Whoa, wait a sec. What are you talking about this? It's all your fault, pal. You're guilty, guilty, guilty. Yeah, I should have you arrested. I, I think the good detective is about done here. Yeah, a little bit. It was something she had bought over two months ago. What did she buy him? Over two months ago. Yup, she's a very considerate woman, pal. So, what was this birthday present? She got him a glove. A single glove? Why would she only give him one? Uh, actually, your honor, the glove in question is a baseball glove. Oh, I see, a baseball glove. Officer Prince was a huge baseball fan. Baseball glove, hmm? Let's press further on that. Just now, I believe you said that the present was something she had bought over two months ago. Yeah. Are you saying she bought the glove at a store that far in advance? No, nothing like that, pal. Then what was... What is it like? She ordered it. It was custom made. Custom made? The glove was custom made. Yep, that's what I said. Hmm. So the glove was custom made. Your Honor, I really don't see how this glove is related to this case. Yes, it would seem that there is little re uh, relevance. What do you think, Mr. Wright? Do you think this glove is really relevant to this case? Of course it's relevant. I don't know where this will lead me, but... Of course it is relevant. That glove is the key to this whole case. He has bluffing to the max! Now this is the Mr. Right I know. I'm so happy you're back, sir. I was wondering how long it'd take. This is great. Hmm. Pressing people. It feels like I've done this before. As if I used to do this to squeeze information from even the most tight look people. Alright, crazy. Go do your thing, man. Very well. If you are that convinced, then let's hear some more about the matter. Actually, I brought the glove with me today. And? Why didn't you say so earlier? Hurry and show the glove to the court. Well, I didn't think it had anything to do with this case. Anyway, this is it, sir. It's, a uh, rather yellow, isn't it? Baseball glove added to the court. A birthday present from Maggie to the victim. It was custom made. Officer Prince really liked the color yellow. And that's why you had it to special order it. Yep, that's right. That and one other reason. I think this court was has heard enough. I don't know. I want to I want to look at that cuz that looks like it's a um a glove for the right hand which means the officer was probably left-handed. And if you look at the picture, he wrote with his right hand. So that that's a huge contradiction right there. Hopefully, the stream is still up and running. Huh. I think this court has heard enough. It is clear that the victim 
and the defendant were involved with each other. Yes, that's correct, Your Honor. Now, if this is true, it brings up an important question. Was the name Maggie really written by the victim? I see your point, Your Honor. Oh, I'm a bit laggy. Okay. Hopefully not too laggy. Hopefully my internet's not screwing up again. Detective Gumshoe, please tell the court a little more about the name on the ground. Oh, yes, sir. Writing on the ground. When we first looked into the handwriting, unfortunately, we couldn't confirm that it was the victim's handwriting. Next, we checked the victim's pointer finger. We found that there was sand trapped under the victim's fingernail. There was also scratches on his skin that were caused by him riding on the ground. From this, we could confirm that the victim wrote this name with his right hand. Uh, I, he's left-handed. <coughs> he's left-handed. Go away, motorcycle! I'm fucking with my skin! Um, yes, a perfectly logical conclusion. Now then, Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. Thank you, Your Honor. Riding on the ground. I have a hunch. I'm not gonna press on anything. I'm gonna go... We already heard this. So... Fingernail. No, it was a left-handed glove. Yo, what's up, uh, Miss Dexia? Sorry, I have not said your name before. But thanks for that love, man. Those bikers really love going by your window. They really do. They really do. Detective Gumshoe, take a look at this. Uh, it's the glove, right? Holy shit, dude, thanks for the biddies, man. Much love, bro. Thank you so much. Dude, that's awesome. Could you tell the court what is special about this glove? Oh, uh, it's special. Uh, never really thought about it, but, uh, it's real yellow. That's about it. Yes, it's really yellow, but that is only one of its qualities. Huh? Okay, dude, thanks for the biddies, man. That's awesome, bro. Uh, <clears throat> there's another reason why it's special. And what would that be? It's very simple. This glove is made for a left-handed person. Good thanks for the lurk, man. And uh, the show of love, bro. Thank you so much. Left-handed? Well, you're absolutely right. This glove is made to be worn on the right hand. That is why it had to be a custom made. I have never seen a bright yellow left-hander's glove for sale, have you? Um, no. So, detective, which hand did the victim use to write the name with again? Uh, it's easy. Look, it's obvious from his picture that it was his Wait a second. Don't forget that the victim was left-handed. Ah! Oh. Is it? This is, I mean, I am ch- Overruled. Mr. Wright, I would like to know what your line of reasoning proves. There is only one conclusion that can be drawn. A left-handed person could not have written a message with his right hand, which is completely bullshit because he could have, but in this case, he can't. Therefore, the person who wrote the name Maggie could not have been the victim. Oh, shit's going down, people. Oh, right. When you think about it that way, then yes. It is not possible that this name was written by the victim himself. 
Uh, that means Maggie is. No, it's not impossible, Mr. Pate. I yes, Your Honor. The evidence the prosecution has presented has failed to prove the defendant's guilt. In fact, I believe you have you have proven her to be innocent. No! Alright, oh, you did it, Mr. Wright! Phew! I feel like I could breathe again! It seems that we have reached the conclusion. You did a fine job once again, Mr. Wright. Me, Your Honor? Uh, well, thank you, sir. You, you see, you got complimented by the judge again. You're really good. And that's why you can't give up being a lawyer, sir. Uh, are you junk? I'm more than ready to retire. I will now announce my verdict. This court finds the defendant, Maggie Bird. Oh, God. N no, not yet. Oh, God. I mean, please give me a few minutes, Your Honor. What is the meaning of this, Mr. Payne? The prosecution is not finished yet. What do you mean? Uh, we would like to call our next witness to the stand. What? Of course there's another witness. There's always somebody else. And what did this witness witness? The moment the victim was pushed to his death. What's more, he saw the very face of the culprit. What the heck? What the fuck, Phoenix? Pretty much that's where we're at. Order. Order in this court. I believe a recess is in order. Afterwards, we will hear from this new witness. I had a feeling that this was a bit too easy. Hmm. I need more information. I'll have to see what I can find out during this recess. I can't let my guard down. It's only going to get tougher from here. The guy that whacked you, I bet. Yeah, most likely he's the dude that's going to be coming in. Court is adjourned for recess. Okay. <laughs> to be continued. Woohoo! Sure, we'll save. We'll, uh, save over that one. Okay. September 8th, 1143 AM, District Court Defendant Lobby, number one. Uh, it's all good, crazy. You take care of what you got to, man. Uh, amnesia? I can't believe my lawyer's trying to defend me in such a state. I, uh, why did you tell me, sir? Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't mention it to you. Oh, I know what to do. I heard you could fix something like this with a really strong shock to your system. Come on, lower your head a little. A uh, Maggie kick should be all you need. Oh, God. Uh, uh no, no, no. I, I think I'll pass on this one. Come on, uh, I'm sorry. Whenever I see someone in trouble, I have a hard time leaving them alone. I, I tend to stick my nose where it doesn't belong and try to tackle everyone's problems. My head's one problem you won't be tackling today. <laughs> More like pass out. <laughs> Phoenix needs to lay down, man. Phoenix is having a hard day. Well, we're here to solve your problem first. We could deal with mine later. For now, do you think you could fill me in on a few things? Of course, I'd be honored to. Oh, uh, well, I guess we'll start with my name and then I can tell you about me. No, no, that's okay, really. I think I know you and your name pretty well by now. I was wondering if you could help me figure out a few things about myself. So my name is Phoenix Wright. <laughs> what a weird name. Hmm, this is serious. You really don't remember. 
the Maggie kick. The Maggie kick would knock his ass out. I'll tell you what, sir. You could have this back, and maybe it'll help. This is a business card? I got it from you. It's my most prized possession. You could borrow it for now, okay? Please give it back. Okay, there are some numbers written on the back. Oh, that's your cell phone number. It's my business card. I hand wrote my card phone number on the back. I guess for now we should stop talking about me and start talking about this case. This case? Yep. Can you think of anything that would be helpful for me to know? Um, what can I tell you? Um, I can't think of anything other than the incident with that cell phone, but... Cell phone? Yeah, your eyes lit up when we talked about it at the detention center, sir. Hurry up, then, and tell me. This might be very important. Okay, Roger! She's less annoying than the other cop from the last case. But still. Like, I, I, I don't like her cheeriness in such a, uh, a grim situation where she's up for murder. It was, it was on the day of the crime, just before 6 p.m. I picked up a lost cell phone while on a walk with Dustin. Oh, God. And all of a sudden, the phone began to ring. Um, hello? Oh, thank you. I've been searching for my phone. Is this yours? Oh, I'm glad you called. We can meet up and I can give it back. And I'll be right there. Um, I'm sorry, I didn't catch your name. You could call me Maggie. Yo, oh, Lord. She just slapped herself. What the fuck? Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's weird. We agreed to meet at 6 p.m. Dustin and I waited for the person to show up. But they never did. Hmm. So where is the phone you found now? I gave it to you yesterday. Uh, to me? Is it that phone in my pocket? Oh, oh, you mean this? Do you think it has anything to do with the murder? I don't really know, but if my eyes lit up. Ah, uh, you were here all along! Maya! Yay! You're so mean! I called you a million times, but you wouldn't pick up. And when I went to check in the courtroom, everyone had already left. <laughs> I, now, who in the heck is this? Let I me mean, guess, I'm supposed to know this girl too. Hey, good morning, Maggie. And good morning to you too, Maya. So, so, how's it going? And it's there a word for worse than abysmal? Hence so, why uh, you got attacked. Yep. Definitely that phone. I Whoever owns that phone's the murderer. I'm pretty sure. Oh, and what if I said that everything will be fine? That's right, it's Maya to the rescue with the ultra decisive super important evidence. Here you are, Nick. The thing you wanted me to bring. Huh? Oh, uh, thanks. What the heck is this list? It has about 20 people's names and phone numbers written on it. It was kind of tough, but I managed to dig up some dirt. It looks like these guys are up to no good. No good? As in... There's a group of con artists the police are currently investigating. I think these guys are members of that group. Most of unfamiliar names and phone numbers. Members of a con artist group. 
Why would a group of con artists pop up in a case like this? Don't look at me! Hmm. And where did you get this list from in the first place? What? Don't you remember, Nick? You're the one who asked me to look this up yesterday. Oh, is that right? These numbers were in the memory of that phone Maggie found. Hmm. So that's where they're from. You're awfully forgetful these days, Nick. I hope I never get to be a forgetful old prune like you. He's only in his 20s. He's not that old. Um, my... Actually, Mr. Wright is... Mr. Wright, recess is now over. Please bring the defendant and return to the courtroom immediately. Oh, oops. I guess you have to get going. We can talk about this, you being old later, Nick. We wish us luck. I guess I have all the pieces now, more or less. All that's left is to put it all together. I'm not going to lose this. I can't. Come on, Nick. Better get a move on. Yeah. Bring Maya with you, Nick. Maya needs to be with you. Maya is the only way you're going to win this fucking case. Bring Maya, please. Yes, Maya's there. Court will not reconvene. Please call your next witness to the stand, Mr. Payne. Yes, Your Honor. But before I do, if I may say a few words. What is it, Mr. Payne? It's about next witness. The next witness. He has a, te he has a tendency to say things that rub people the wrong way, you see. Good luck. Thank you, boo. <laughs> So I ask that the court might be a little lenient on. There is no need to give a pre preface. Just hurry up and call your witness, please, preface. Yes, Your Honor. The prosecution calls its next witness. A drifter who was taking a walk in the park on the day of the murder. Oh, this dude. Please state your name for the court, witness. And before I do, I'd like to clarify a little something. Ah, uh, alright, go ahead. Uh, just now, you introduced my wonderful self to the court, correct? Perhaps as a drifter who was taking a walk. Uh, did I? But I will not stand for that. Now, you've tainted the court's eyes and colored me wrongly. Sure, I suppose calling me, but... Uh, to, to fucking assholes talking way too much. He's full of himself, just like that one asshole. Uh, yes, I understand. I'm very sorry. I will be more careful from now on. What is he? A human chatterbox? Uh, I have to question him. Oh God. Fashion, cars, women, glasses, and of course the university. First the rights only need apply. Glasses, but you weren't wearing glasses. Oh, I bet he was, and those glasses match that coat nicely. That's enough. Your name, witness. Oh, is that how you want to play this? Using your power and influence to keep the young people down. I see how you work now. You old people and your dirty tricks. You thought you had me, but you thought wrong. Uh, I'm sorry, it won't happen again. Oh man. I forgive you. Alright, I suppose I can tell you my name. I'm Richard Wellington, the drifting virtuoso, with a PhD in drifting as it were. If you wanted to, you could call me a university student in transit. Hot damn it. Um, Mr. Wellington. On the day of the murder, you were taking a strolling through the park, correct? It would appear that you have attached it to that word. If you must, then by all means. 
It's all good, crazy. Do what you do, homie. I know you showing that love, man. But I remind you that I am in no way a prepubescent boy out on a walk with mommy. If you must... A anyway, please testify to the court what you saw during your walk through the park. See? You said it again. Taking a walk. You know you. I know you always do, man. But like you said, you a ghost. <laughs> what you witnessed will do, Mr. Wellington. Oh, this fucking guy. This guy's gonna... It, it, he's gonna be another one of those people that drive me insane. Watch. I was at the park all afternoon, deep in thought about my life situation. I don't remember the time all that well, but I do believe it was past 6 p.m. All of a sudden, a police officer falls from above, right in front of my eyes. Without a thought, I looked up and there I met the eyes of a charming young lady. Of course, I remember her sweet face. It was that of a pretty defendant there. The only other thing I saw was the banana that fell with the police officer. Banana? Remind you of someone? <laughs> Who's it got you thinking of, boo? Let's see if we uh, think of the same people. Hmm, that was certainly a decisive testimony. Decisive? Nick, did you hear what he just said? Yeah. It's all you have to say? How can you be so calm? It's strange. My mind is very calm and clear. And maybe it's because I believe in my client. You mean Maggie? Yes. And if she really is innocent, then that can only mean one thing. This guy is lying. Yeah, he is. He has that face of a, you know, fiblicator. You may now question the witness, Mr. Wright. <laughs> Look in the mirror, boo. Man, that don't... No, you know what? No. No. I mean, the name may sound similar because the intin at the end, but still. <laughs> I'll find out the truth no matter how well you craft your lies. What I saw that day. <laughs> I'm laughing at me, Boo Boo! I was at the park all afternoon, deep in thought about my situation. Ah. Uh, I don't remember the time. At uh, the time, all that well, but I do believe it was past 6 p.m. Let's press there. How did you know what time it was? I see you're not wearing a watch, so... Is that the best you could do? Do you think you can discredit me like that? You're just a third-rate biased fool. I guess I can't expect real smarts from you. Oh, God. Uh, his arrogance is really intolerable. So what should I do? Let's press him harder. Answer the question. How did you know what time it was? Tisk tisk. I can't believe I have to deal with a worm like you. You're just a shallow man who can only slam on desks and point at people for fun. Huh. I guess I don't have a choice. But I'll try to explain it so that even a third-rate simpleton like you can understand. There was this little thing they call a clock at the park. Did you get that? Do you know what a clock is? It's a thing that tells you the time. As you can see, Mr. Wright, it's even in this picture of the crime scene. Ah, uh, so it is. I looked at the clock and that's how I knew the time. 
But if you ask me, well, he's doing this shit again. God damn it. I hate people like this. Just shut up and say what you need to say. God damn it. And yet again, another flood of meaningless words. Talk about a first class waste of time. Exactly, Phoenix. He is a waste of time. I'm there with you, buddy. In any case, all of a sudden a police officer falls from above right in front of my eyes. And how did you know he was a police officer? Oh god, uniform, obviously. You obviously have no idea how powerful my deductive reasoning skills are. With one glance I could tell just what kind of occupation he held. A shoddy do-it-yourself hairstyle- uh, God damn it! Shouldn't that statement have come first? Wow, that's pretty impressive. Hey Nick, do you think he's figured out what to do? What I do? Even I haven't figured that out yet. Without a thought, I looked up and there I met the eyes of a charming young lady. Are you sure you got a good look at her face? I... I, I want to choke this boy. Animals have this thing called an eye, Mr. Wright. They use this eye to see things. In this case, in the case of humans, we have two of them. Yes, even you. I don't care if I have them or not. Did you or did you not get a clear look at her face? That's... that's what the witness was just about to get to. I would like to request that Mr. Wright not use such a loud voice during questioning. Sustain. Mr. Wright, please refrain from raising your voice in this court. And please don't make me have to raise my voice. Are you finished? I'd like to continue if that's alright with you. Of course I remember her sweet face. It was that of our pretty defendant there. Hmm. So you're sure you were not mistaken? Please, don't confuse your pitiful train wreck of a life with mine. Jesus, this dude! He needs to be hit by a bus! And what you call a famous brand name product while well, you are only a cheap imitation. There is no way someone as magnificent as myself could have made a mistake. Of course, of course. Oh, of course. Did you notice anything else of interest, witness? The only other thing I saw was the banana that fell with the police officer. Banana? The banana? Well, it was actually more than just one. More like a bunch of bananas. Now what would be a bunch of bananas be doing there? <laughs> He's talking about the glove! He has to be talking about the glove! And why would I know such a thing? I'm only telling you what I saw. It's really strange. Maggie never mentioned anything about a bunch of bananas. That's it, Nick. He's gotta be lying about the bananas. Hmm, he could be, but... There's no reason for him to lie about there being bananas at the crime scene. Remember what I said at the beginning? This game likes to mock you, lol. And it's doing it slowly to really get under your skin. Yeah, it is. It really is. And what if it's not a lie? Well, maybe he thought he was seeing one thing and it was something else. If I mistook something else for a bunch of bananas, then that would be an inaccuracy. Think, Phoenix, think. If my client is innocent, there is no way he could have seen what he says he's did. Which means if we could somehow show he's lying, that's exactly what we need to do. She's right. She's got a sharp mind, but I just wish I could remember who she is. Is everything okay, Nick? Ugh. Alright, we're gonna present the... the glove. 
Yeah, that's what he saw. Mr. Wellington, I believe I have the bananas you saw right here. Oh, ah, so you knew about the bananas too. Why didn't you say so earlier? Oh god, smug bastard. Oh, I hate this smug bastard. But you don't think you could use this in a way to pull more information out of me. And that's where you'd be wrong. Uh, Mr. Wright, what is the meaning of this? Yeah, isn't that the baseball glove? Huh? Oh, what a, ooh, a baseball glove. Doesn't it look delicious? Care for a bite? Phoenix is so witty. Uh, that, that's... That's not... It's a no. Your Honor, I think this proves one very important fact. This witness loves bananas, has bad eyesight, knows nothing about bad, bad eyesight. By the way, just how bad are your eyes? Huh? How? What are you... Why are you asking me about all these, this all of a sudden? Your Honor, it is very simple to mistake a glove for a bunch of bananas. No, I don't think so. Objection overruled. You, you, you're one of those people. Yes, you know what I mean. You're like those people who refuse. Oh, motherfucker, with all the gibberish and talking and bad shit. Fuck you, guy. We're on to something, though. We're getting his ass. And that is why I asked you how bad your eyesight is. That both 2200. I suppose you're going to tell me that's terrible, right? Why are you not wearing your glasses today, then? Um... That's because I lost them recently, you see. Of course, I was planning on getting a new pair made right away. But you know, my glasses are no ordinary glasses, so to replace them... How about when you witnessed the crime? Were you wearing your glasses then? How about it, witness? You... you... you are an unrelenting evil man! You're like those... oh, motherfucker, does this dude never shut the fuck up? Really, seriously, just on and on and on and on! Which boils down to you were not wearing your glasses at the time. Therefore, the identity of the woman at the scene of the crime and the that of the defendant cannot be proven to be the same by the witness. Blue glasses that would match your outfit. Exactly, that's what I said earlier. But the height difference was, the height difference was only nine feet. It was very possible for him to see the face of the culprit standing on the upper path. Hmm. Witness. Please be more accurate in your testimony. Remember, a person's life is at stake. Y yes your honor. Now then, please continue with your testimony. Please tell the court what happened next in the moments after you witnessed the crime. What happened next? The girl on the upper path ran away as soon as she realized I was there. After that, I immediately called the police station to report the crime. It must have been 6.45 p.m. when I made the call. They must have a lot of free time on their hands since they showed up within 10 minutes. That, that is pretty fast, I would guess, for a murder, right? I don't know. Hmm. So the person who was on the upper path saw you and then ran away. Yes, that is correct. Which is why even someone with a superior brain like mine can understand that. That girl is the murderer. Fucking hate this guy. Already. You may question a witness, Mr. Wright. What happened next? The girl on the upper path ran away as soon as she realized I was there. 
After that, I immediately called the police station to report the crime. It must have been 6.45 p.m. when I made the call. They must have a lot of free time on their hands since they were there showed up within 10 minutes. Do I have anything that shows that? Huh. S time of death, 9... <sighs> At 6.28 p.m. Cause of... Heart broken. Let's just press. We're gonna press on I know that was the last one, but... So you're saying that there were police in the scene by 7 p.m. They got there before that, I think. There usually aren't many people in that area at the time of day. But suddenly, before I knew it, there were people crawling all over, gawking. It certainly says something about the morals of the people in this country. I can't find anything out of the ordinary in his testimony. Why don't you take one more look at the court record? Yeah, I guess I should. The ha I'm gonna press all of it and see what he said. She ran away just like that. Yeah, she did. She saw me and flew the nest. Guilty bird she is. Why would she do that? Oh, I'm sorry. Was that pun too hard for someone who only got a third-rate education? Yeah. Actually, it did take me a few seconds to get... <laughs> anyway, if she ran away, she the instant she saw you, how could you tell it was my client? Uh, the, witness, the witness already answered that question. He has stated that the defendant is the culprit. This is true, Mr. Wright. I'm striking your question from the record. I'm gonna get more information out of him. After that, he immediately called the police. Immediately. As in... As in immediately. I mean, sure, a minute might have elapsed before I did, but... That's the duty of every good citizen, or did they not teach that at your pitiful school? Think people learn about how to call the police in college? Hey Nick, I think you should take a look at the court record for a second. I think it's this. This is the only thing we have with a time on it. And... I mean, you can't really go by that because it's not showing anything. It must have been 6.45 p.m. when I made the call. And I immediately called the police station. It must have been 6.45 p.m. when I made the call. I don't know, she's... She's telling me to look at the court records, and the only thing that has a time on it is the time of death. How do you know what time it was? That detective told me. You know which one I mean. The one with the jacket that makes him look like a dropout from a no-name high school. Hey pal, I graduated from a pretty good, I mean top-ranked college. I don't believe this. It doesn't matter. I don't believe it. I was mistaken on what time I called. And if I am wrong, then the detective obviously doesn't know how to tell time. What? Why you? You're just some lousy kid who... I think the car can see your point. Anyway, how did the police respond? They must have a lot of free time on their hand. Yeah. I'm gonna save this one because I'm pretty stumped here. But I was told twice to look at the court records. And we can look at the profiles. But self proclaimed drifting, virtuoso, the prosecutor, Dustin Prince. Mag Maggie found this in the park. She got a contact with its owner. 
I don't know. I think... I'm gonna try to press that. It didn't work here, but I'm gonna try to press it on the other one as well. We must have a lot of time on our hands. Let's see. Running up a path right away as soon as... After that, I immediately called the police. Yeah, there it is. Uh, I was right. Mr. Wellington, would you please take a look at this? You mean the victim's autopsy report? According to this, the murder occurred at 6.28 p.m. So what of it? You said that you called the police immediately after the murder took place. However, by the time you had called the police, it was already 6.45 p.m. There was clearly a 15 minute gap here. Do you deny it? Ah! I think this court would like to hear what you were doing during this 15 minute gap. Ah! Uh, the witness was in shock at the time after witnessing a terrible murder. It's only to be expected that he would be a little dazed. Objection! Fifteen minutes is hardly what I would call a little dazed. Ah! Mr. Wellington. Yes? Explain yourself. What were you doing during those fifteen minutes? Answer the question. Ah, uh, uh, telephone, I mean, spit it out. I, I was searching for a phone booth. A phone booth? You mean you didn't have a cell phone? You and your questions as if you're trying to open all the layers of the Matrio Sheikah doll? What? You must think y'all really something special. Witness! I, I lost my cell phone. There, are you happy? You lost it. Unbelievable. You lose your glasses and your cell phone. You must be very scatterbrained when it comes to your belongings. What are you saying? That the first rate people are never allowed to lose things? Haven't you- Oh, fuck this again. I hate this guy so much. Enough! Oh man, oh man. Wait, hold on a second. He lost his cell phone. Nick, that cell phone could be it! You mean this phone Maggie found? There's no way. Boy, I didn't see this coming. What should I do? We're gonna question further, Nick! Of course we're gonna question further! Mr. Wellington, where is your cell phone right now? Well, what are you getting all excited about? You seem a little confused. I found my phone. I'll have you know. See, here it is. Oh, I see. Hmm. Looks like he's got his phone. And I thought that just maybe this was his. Hmm. Well then, I think we've cleared this issue up. At the time of the murder, the witness did not have his cell phone because he had lost it. Therefore, the delay in his call was caused by his search for a phone booth. Oh well. That's the gist of it. I guess you could put it that way and leave it at that. Do you have any further questions, Mr. Wright? Oh, there has to be something. Your Honor, the witness's testimony does not make any sense. I don't believe that there was ever a need for the witness to search for a phone. <sighs> How dare you! You can't just make outrageous claims like that. You do some sort of proof? Do you have some sort of proof? Don't you? Well, yeah, of course. This evidence should be good enough, I think. Phone numbers. 
Uh, yeah, we're gonna save this here. And then, uh, try. Alright, let's have this proof then. Please present proof that the witness had no need to search for a public phone booth. A list of con artists and their phone numbers stored on the cell phone Maggie found. Do, do you think that's what we have to present? Do you think this will work? We'll try it. It's very simple. This is the evidence that backs up my claim. And yet again, you have presented this court with... Huh? It's obtuse and meaningless. I don't get it. Why do you think he would... Uh, because I was looking at the evidence and it just hit me. I thought, hey, he really didn't have to look for a phone. Then why don't you hurry up and present a... Alright, let's have this proof then. Police present a... It's very simple. This is the evidence that packs up my claim. And you gotta get... What? It's not the numbers. It's not the phone. Um... Okay, so well, this is the it. Dude, I keep I keep failing like a motherfucker. Um Oh damn it. I don't I don't I don't know what to pick here. I am so out of it. It's not the cell phone. It has to be one of these. The pick with the Was there a phone booth? God damn it, yeah. So it's simple, actually, please take a look at this. At the crime scene photo. Is there a problem with it? Oh, there's nothing wrong with the, uh, with the picture. But if you don't understand my logic after looking at it, something is wrong with you. No. It's... It's, it's a phone booth. That is correct. All the defendant had to do was walk three steps. Mr. Wellington, why did you not use the phone that was right in front of you? Oh. Order, order. Uh, what, what does reporting the crime a little late prove to the defense? The witness can't explain what he was doing for those 15 minutes. That is the reason enough to throw suspicion in his testimony. Yes, this is very true. What do you have to say for yourself, witness? Then I bet this phone really is his, Nick. He must have killed Dustin to get his phone back. But Maggie said that she was going to return it to him. So there was no reason for him to kill for it. And on top of that, we still have the phone she found anyway. Hmm. But if he wasn't looking for his cell phone, maybe he was looking for something else. Was he? Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. Do you have any thoughts? Do you have any thoughts you would like to share with the court? Can you offer an explanation as to what the witness was doing during those 15 minutes? Yes, I have an idea. There's only one possible explanation. All right, let's hear your explanation. However, be forewarned that if your explanation is not persuasive, you will be penalized. Think carefully before you present, Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. Oh, come on, come on. Stop. Let's, let's save again so we don't have to redo a whole bunch of shit. Oh, God, I probably shouldn't have said there was only one possibility. <clears throat> Please present to the court the one piece of evidence that will answer you the following. Why didn't the witness call the police right away? 
Um. Yeah, I did save. I did. Now, the only thing I could think of is this. Or this. These pictures don't show much of anything that has to do with him. But. I mean, it could be that. It could be that he was writing the name with the dude's finger. But it could also be that. Oh, God. The reason he killed Dustin was because he was he was part of this whole list. And when he went to go get the phone from Maggie, he seen Dustin was a police officer. So he probably thought that the phone was already, you know, searched or traced back to, you know, these people. Why didn't the witness call the police right away? I'm gonna... And perhaps this is the evidence you need to be convinced. Perhaps. Uh, I thought this was an idea I thought I'd throw out there. It suggests that perhaps you should find a better piece of evidence. It's a cost, Your Honor. But before you do, you will be penalized. Yeah, I get it, I get it. And please present the court... The glasses, maybe? Well, Welling Mr. Wellington! Oh, what? D don't do that! You almost gave me a heart attack! These are your glasses, aren't they? Ah, uh, where- Where did you find- uh, I believe the court all heard what you just confessed to. That these glasses are in fact yours. I'll tell you where they were found, Mr. Wellington. These glasses were found under the victim's body. But under the vi victim's body? Order, order! Now, now, wait a second, hold on. I, I didn't confess or confirm anything. Your Honor, I think the answer is quite clear here. As he fell, Dustin Prince grabbed the culprit's glasses. The culprit knew that he had to find his glasses and search frantically for them. What he didn't realize was that they were under the victim's body. And that's, that is why it took him 15 minutes to make that call. That's, that's a, that's a good idea. But Mr. Wright, are you, are you indi indicated that the witness is the real murder? Of course, that is precisely what I am doing. Oh, why is he choking himself? <laughs> Fucking weird ass motherfucker. I know, I'm right. He is the real murderer. Did you figure it out, Nick? More or less. Turns out this cell phone was the key to this case after all. Anyway, now is our chance to deep six this guy. I'll sink him in one shot. Yeah! This is so exciting watching you work again! Somehow my old self is coming back to me. It's time to sink or swim. Everything rests on the edge of a knife. This is the moment I've been waiting for! Order, order! Your Honor, the defense, the defense is making a mockery of this court. Without any solid ground to stand on, the, he accuses the witness of being the murderer. Yeah, 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 yeah that's right. I, I'm no criminal. This third-rate fraud of a lawyer. In that case, why don't we look at it from a different perspective? Let's hear your explanation as to why you are not the murderer. W why? That, that's easy. Um, uh, for example, there's um, the name the victim wrote. What about that? Oh, you mean the name Maggie? 
Y yeah, even an idiot like you could read that, right? But we already know this was not written by the victim himself. After all, the defendant's name is Maggie, with an E-Y, and the victim was left-handed. In other words, in order to make the defendant look guilty, the real criminal used the victim's right hand to write her name on the ground. But, 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 wouldn't that mean that the real criminal was someone the defendant knew? Otherwise, how else would that person know her name was Maggie or Maggie? Uh, that is a good point. The witness didn't even know of Miss Bird before this trial. Aha, uh -huh, I forgot. Hmm. Was there any way this creep could have no Yeah! Yeah, because he called the phone and she told him her name. Well, you best if I could prove that the witness had a chance to learn. Uh, the defendant's name is Maggie. Now, will the defense please present its case? How could the witness have known the defendant's name? Mr. Wellington, you didn't have your cell phone with you on the day of the murder, correct? So what if I didn't? When you realized you had lost it, what did you do? Oh, what did I do? Didn't you try to find it by calling it? Why you... how did you... Your Honor, these questions have nothing to do with... Overruled. Mr. Wright, where are you going with this line of questioning? Do you think there is some relation between the witness's cell phone and the murder? I do, Your Honor. On the day of the murder, Maggie Bird picked up a lost phone in the park. And... She also received a phone call from the owner's phone. Beep. Um, hello? Oh, thank you. I've been searching for my phone. Oh, is this yours? I'm glad you called. We can meet up and I can give it back. I'll be right there. I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't catch your name. You can call me Maggie. And with the bag of bananas? That was when you learned that her name was Maggie. Uh, um, uh, but you made one fatal mistake. A fatal mistake. My client's name is Maggie. But the name that was written on the ground was Maggie with an IE, not an EY. This is a mistake that could only occur if you... If all you knew was how her name sounded. <clears throat> okay. Order, order. Ah, uh, but your honor, the witness has no motive. And your point is? Uh, it's very simple, your honor. A person usually would not kill someone without a reason. Mr. Wellington had no reason to kill anyone. Uh, that is absolutely correct. I don't have a motive. Hmm, Mr. Wright? Your honor, can you explain what mot motive this witness could have had? It's very simple, Your Honor. Are you sure, Nick? If I said I can't offer an explanation, then the trial's over, right? Yeah, but... Now then, please present to the court proof that the witness had a motive. Mr. Wellington's motive is right here. <laughs> what is this? A list? These phone numbers were pulled from the memory of the phone the defendant found. And we have determined that the people on this list are members of a certain group. You... you look up all those numbers? Of course. This is a list of phone numbers that was stored in the cell phone's memory. The names and numbers belong to the people who are members of a certain con artist group. What? Con artist! Can you explain why these numbers were on your phone, Mr. Wellington? This, this is an outrage, an invasion of privacy. 
Looking up the phone numbers on a person's phone is a worse crime than murder. You're one of those pe- Yeah, there he goes again, just fucking blabbing off into the wind! I don't care, Mr. Wellington. All I want is for you to tell us about this list. You think you- any of you know what it is like to be a refined man such as me? Your Honor, this- this is- this is unjustified badgering of the witness. Objection overruled. Mr. Wright, what is the meaning of this? Why would the witness have the numbers of a group of con artists in his phone? Isn't that obvious? The witness is... <clears throat> a member of that group. It's the only, only explanation, honestly. Mr. Wellington is a member of this very group. No! All of your friends' phone numbers are stored right here in this phone. If anyone were to look into these phone numbers, it would be all over for you. That is why you had to kill. No, this is too much! I fucking love this game. Even though it gives me a headache and a half. <laughs> hmm, this does not make quite a bit of sense. Well, Mr. Wellington, would you care to explain? I, um, I... I got you now. I, I, that, I, that police officer... Your Honor! What is it, Mr. Payne? Your Honor, th this is, this is unjustified badgering of the witness. You said the exact same thing only a few seconds ago. But, but, please... Please, let's think about the content of the phone call. Um, hello. Oh, thank you. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. The defendant had already promised that she would return the phone. After that, all Mr. Wellington had to do was meet back with Miss Bard to get his phone. Why, then, would he need to kill anyone? Hmm, that is a valid point. What does the defense think about this? Hmm. If you think about it logically, then it makes sense. Then maybe we should be thinking outside the box. Yeah, if we think like that, let's see. Maybe that slime boss saw something in the, at the crime scene that made him commit murder. Of course, he's seen a cop. Your thoughts, Mr. Wright? Hmm. Well... I don't think Mr. Wellington went to pick up his phone in a very friendly manner. But he was promised his phone, so why would he have been unfriendly to the defendant? I think he must have seen something that didn't agree with him when he got there. Well then, Mr. Wright, what is this something that didn't he didn't agree with? I'm going to use this one. <clears throat> the witness saw this. Mr. Wellington, is, is he correct? By the expression on his face, I would say that wasn't it. Looks like I was wrong. What the fuck? Okay, I'm gonna save. That way I don't make any mistakes. Oh, Mr. Wright, try to think before you present again. So he went to get his... Oh, wait, you know what? <clears throat> I was I was doing it wrong. He seen this. What Mr. Wellington saw was the victim. Yeah, you have to use the pictures of the people now, which threw me off. What Mr. Wellington saw was the victim. Uh, that... the victim? You mean Dustin Prince? Dustin for Prince had gone on his date right after his shift was over. With no time to change, he went to the park still wearing his police uniform. Oh! The girl that picked up my phone is with a policeman. He couldn't have known they were going out, so he began to worry. He was afraid the policeman would ask a few questions before returning the phone. 
If I do anything suspicious, he might run a check on my phone. In his mind, it was possible they had already run a check on his phone. And he went into a panic, is what you're saying. Exactly. Officer Prince was murdered simply because he was in a uniform. That's fucked up. Mr. Payne, do you have any comments? I, um, I'm thinking. Hmm, it seems the truth has come out at last. The witness, Mr. Wellington, you are. <laughs> oh, God. Ah, impressive. Not bad for a person with a third-rate education. What's that supposed to mean? The evidence! Evidence! Uh, the guy is really keeping me... Oh, you've been waving around and talking about is the suspicious cell phone. Suspicious phone number, the suspicious con group that... They're all on that phone. But who's to say that phone is really mine? Where's your proof? Your evidence. You want proof that this phone is yours? <laughs> I already told you earlier. That phone I lost, I've already found it. You don't have even the slightest idea who the phone in your hand belongs to. But you can be sure it isn't mine, you simpleton. What? <laughs> it feels good to see you squirm. Hmm. We do seem to have a problem in our hands with this phone. Whose phone is it? Without knowing that it's meaningless as evidence. Y Your Honor. This is bad. I can't let him turn the tables on me. Then use the number to call it. Hmm. This cell phone. There has to be something I've overlooked. There's gotta be... Hmm, maybe... Fingerprints on the phone. <sighs> Got it. We should check the for fingerprints. Fingerprints? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Wellington must have left some prints on his phone. Nick, don't you remember? When you got that from Maggie, you wiped it off. And what? You said there was sand all over it, so... I wiped it... I wiped it! Pretty thoroughly, too. <laughs> it's so, so much fun watching third-rate trash babble like morons amongst themselves. Uh, he's made a complete recovery. How many times do I have to say this? My phone is right here, you see. Oh, and incidentally... You can't check the numbers stored on this phone. It must have glitched because all the numbers just magically disappeared. You've got to be choking. He erased all the numbers I was going to use as evidence? M Mr. Wellington. What's this? By the tone of your voice, it sounds like you still have some fight left in you. Where did you finally find your cell phone? <laughs> oh, you are too much! And of course, you have no idea what I'm talking about. Ah, oh, fuck. I, I, oh my g- Oh, now I remember! <laughs> Pink! <laughs> oh, shit! Uh, looks like they hung up. Uh, good. I finally found it. <laughs> so that's when... Oh, what's wrong, Mr. Attorney? Why the harsh glare in your eyes? Nick, we've worked so hard to get this far, but... If you don't do something quick, he's going to get off scot-free. I know. I know this phone has to be his. But how am I supposed to prove something like that? 
Mr. Wright, if you cannot prove who the owner of that cell phone is, your indictment has no bias and therefore no power. It looks like you came up a penny short. Where did I go wrong? And don't blame yourself. You're merely a third-rate lawyer. You only made one big mistake. <laughs> Who are you? What are you? There's something you haven't figured out for yourself yet. Who am I? The court hereby concludes the cross-examination. <laughs> yeah, if that will be all, I'll have you to bid you gentlemen and ladies goodbye. I have a reservation at a, that ultra fancy restaurant on the upper side of town. Thank you for your assistance. You've had a stressful day, so please, bon appetit. What am I supposed to do? Am I supposed to just let... Raise an objection, that's what you do. Please wait, your honor. Alright, Nick. I think I may be able to prove it. Prove it? Prove what, Mr. Wright? Everything. Your Honor, the cross-examination has already ended. Besides, the defense is just going to badger the witness with more inane questioning. You will not harass the witness. Is that clear, Mr. Wright? And did you hear that? No harassment allowed, Mr. Attorney. Please, Your Honor. Very well, but this is your last chance, Mr. Wright. You may present one piece of evidence to the court. You only get one shot at this. If you cannot prove everything, it's over for your client and for you. Do you fully understand? Oh, here it goes. I'm sure you are willing, well aware, Your Honor, but the cross-examination period has ended. Were you paying attention, Mr. Payne? I said that Mr. Wright could present only one more piece of evidence. Ow. Now then, Mr. Wright, this is your last chance. It all comes down to this. It's go time. Please present the one piece of evidence that will explain everything. Why, well, thank you. How nice. Here, please have one of mine. <laughs> fucking judge. Oh, the judge has always been fucking stupid. And judge's business card added to the court record. It's written in fancy script. The ink is strong and clear, but I still can't read it. Wait. What am I doing? This isn't the time to be exchanging business cards. Your Honor. There was something very important about that card, and that is the back of the card. This card is important because of what's on the back. Hmm. You wrote your cell phone number on the back. But but that's exactly it. Can you please call this number from your cell phone? Uh right now, but court is still in session. It's okay, you'll see. Okay, if you say so. Is the defense preparing something, Mr. Wright? We're going to call my cell phone right now. And then the court will see everything for what it is. Of all the idiotic, stupid things to do. The Steel Samurai! <laughs> What? My? Why is my phone? And what is with this stupid sounding ringtone? Mr. Wellington. Hmm. How strange. I can almost swear that you're holding my phone. Y you're... Ah! Uh, no, 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 no. I can't. By the way, before I forget, thank you very much for the lump on my head this morning. He did take my phone, he did! <clears throat> I don't think I need to explain any further except to say... 
Well, when you went to re retrieve your cell phone, you mistakenly took the wrong one. Oh! Uh, uh, please choke yourself out and die, please. That would be- oh, oh, he's doing it! Jesus Christ! And there he goes! Well then, I think we did it, people! Case closed. So that is what happened. You were knocked out by Mr. Wellington. He is a man who lives on his pride and self-image alone. And in order to hide his involvement with the con artist group, he has become paranoid and has lost all ability to make rational judgments. Cool. <laughs> Hi, Shion, what's up? Hmm. Then... Then Mr... M Mr. Wright, the phone you're holding... ...is Mr. Wellington's, naturally. Speaking of that man, how is he, Mr. Payne? Ah, uh, he was arrested and has been taken away, Your Honor. Very well. Now then, this court finds the defendant, Maggie Bird... ...not guilty! Yay! What's up, Defiance host? The most effective way to do it is to do it. Amelia Earnhardt. Well, thank you. That is all. The court is adjourned. How you doing, Carl? September 8th, 2.16 p.m. District Court Defendant Lobby Number 1. I knew that the real you would shine through eventually. I am so moved by what you've done for me, sir. Thank you so much, Mr. Wright. I feel really bad for Dustin. He didn't do anything to deserve this. Yeah, It's probably because of me. Huh? My whole life has been nothing but a whirlwind of bad luck and failures. Your whole life? It can't be that bad, can it? Since I was six months old when I fell from the ninth floor of my apartment, but Jesus fucking Christ! I've been hit by all sorts of vehicles, gotten sick from all sorts of foods, failed at almost every test I've ever taken, experienced almost every kind of disaster. This girl needs to live in a bubble. I never won or even tried at a game of tic-tac-toes. Hide. My life has really been nothing but a string of disasters. That is, uh, pretty bad. Up until I went to college, I was known as the Goddess of Misfortune. And then at the Academy, everybody called me Lady Luckless. Lady Luckless? Oh, oh, what's wrong is that my misfortune always seems to latch into those around me. What do you mean? Uh, when I see someone in trouble, I always try to help. And that's right. That's right. You were talking about this earlier. And it happened again recently too, sir. <clears throat> there was an old lady pacing back and forth by the pedestrian crosswalk. I gave her my hand, and before I knew it, we were having dinner at my house. Huh? Oh. I'm sure that Dustin's gone because of me. That's not true. That glove didn't even have any sort of special meaning. It was just a present to say thanks for covering one of my night shifts. Oh, I see. Everything is all my fault, Dustin's death. Your head being all messed up? Uh, well, I don't think my head is that messed up yet. I'm going to find a new life for myself, starting now. The next time we meet, I'm sure I'll... I'm sure I'll have found a, a whole ocean's worth of good luck by then, sir. Yeah, after all, the goddess of misfortune is only a name. You bet! I'm gonna make it a promise. Next time we meet, I'll only be an unlucky person instead of a goddess. Y yeah, that's the spirit. 
Uh, well, Mr. Wright, my I should get going. Okay, good luck to you. Thanks. You take care of yourselves, too. Oh, God. Oh, what a horrible day. I've got my memory back, but things are still a little fuzzy. But you're okay, and that's what counts. You really had me worried. Come on, let's go back to the office. Huh, I I'm afraid to ask, but here goes. So this might sound bad, but, uh, who are you? What? I thought you said you got your memory back. Oh, God. At that moment, everything really did come back to me. Detective Gumshoe, he's someone I've had clashes with in the past during certain cases, but he's also been a good ally during others. The Judge, he's a lovable kind of old man who is easily swayed by other people's opinions and is fucking stupid! But in the end, he always comes up with the right verdict. This person, I haven't got a clue. He seems to know me, but maybe he's mistaking me for someone else. And this girl, Maya. You you finally remembered? This is Maya Faye, my assistant. That's right. I have so many unforgettable memories with her. For example, Earth to Nick, what's wrong? You keep staring at me. Don't tell me you've missed me. Oh, uh, well, yeah, I suppose I have. I feel like I haven't seen you in ages. Oh? Well, I'm back now, so it's time for us to create new memories together. Alright, sounds good. All the phone numbers on my phone were erased by Mr. Wellington. I guess I have to start over from the very beginning. <coughs> Come on, Nick. Let's go to our usual burger joint. Okay, okay. Actually, it hasn't even been that long since she came back into my life. Maya's back. I fucking love Maya. And that story... That story began on one rainy afternoon two months ago. Episode 1, The Last, The Lost Turnabout, The End. We finished episode 1 tonight, guys, and we're moving on to a brand new episode. Saving content. And we'll save there. Alright, I think we're going to end it here tonight, guys. Uh, that was a fun one to get us back into uh, Phoenix All right, But before we go, let's see who uh, we could dump all you lovely people on. Because, uh, yeah. We gotta raid somebody. And... Why don't we dump you on Han frickin' Solo, who's over there playing Dauntless? I believe he's playing Dauntless. Or, uh... What's up, Mike? We're just ending the stream now, brother. Jack Jack. Jack Jack. What Jack Jack? Who's Jack Jack? Tell me who Jack Jack is. Oh, Jacksimus! Sorry, I missed most of it. I'll try to make the next one. It's all good, Shion. You came out and supported. It's all that matters. You know what? Yeah. Libby, let him know I'm on my way. But, uh, you guys, go say hi to Jackson Miss Prime for me. He's the, uh, he's the defiant, uh, resident, uh, transformer, I would say. But anyway, oh, bye bye now, guys. Thank you all for, your, uh, Coming to the stream and all that nifty jazz. Hopefully I'll see uh, most of you again in the next one. Bye-bye now.